What if there were some traditional herbs used for thousands of years that could dramatically improve your testosterone? You know, tons of guys come to me as patients saying they want to increase their testosterone. Lots of them are already on hormone replacement therapy. They're taking testosterone already because they think the cluster of symptoms that they have is because of testosterone. Ironically, it's pretty easy to have the testosterone levels of a 20 year old these days because they're so damn low compared to where our grandfathers were. But you can radically improve your testosterone in a number of ways. And in this video, we'll discuss the traditional Chinese medicine approach, as well as some herbs that have clinical research behind them. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine with a clinic here in Los Angeles. Oh, and I forgot to say, author of the health book, Master of the Day. So let's jump in here. Now I've had many young men come in to see me clinically for help with improving their oomph in life overall. And inevitably when they come to see me, it's never just one thing. There may be issues with libido and with erections and gaining or maintaining them. But typically there's also the metaphorical oomph, the drive, the ability to concentrate, the ability to get things done, just the confidence that happens when everything is working in life. Now, whether it's because of social media or something that people are seeing online and they think, well, if I just have fatigue and my sexual performance is not what I want and I'm just not that driven, it's gotta be testosterone. That's like the man male hormone. And it's often not true. A lot of the young guys that come to me, sure, they may not be in great shape, but they're not 50 pounds overweight, which you really may have low testosterone at that point. And yes, there is research about how men today have something like one third the testosterone of our grandfathers, but it could just be because we're fat and we don't exercise and we're not out there doing rugged man things in the woods. We're not fighting bears and shooting wolves. That's entirely possible. There's also xenoestrogens and all kinds of compounds in our water, air, food that our grandparents didn't have. We're over medicated. There are so many reasons, but I saw this young man and he was complaining of this cluster of symptoms that we will talk about here. You know, over a period of three or six months, first we started off by fixing his digestion. No more bloating, no more acid reflux. You can eat most things again and you're feeling pretty good. Food allergy's gone. Then we fixed his sleeping because he was having a lot of really severe anxiety. He was now able to sleep at least seven hours per night. He was feeling better. He was able to just function more on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we fixed his anxiety, partly from the sleep, partly from just treating the anxiety directly. And he said one day, you know what's so funny? The fatigue, the libido problems, the erectile problems, all of that is gone actually. So you must've fixed my testosterone. Now, I don't really know if his testosterone levels changed at all because I didn't test them before and after. So a lot of these symptoms may not actually be related to testosterone at all. But if you want to approach it from a testosterone point of view, this is what I would recommend. One of the most common correlations I see with men, especially younger men that are having hard times with low testosterone or with general sexual performance is because they have a dysregulated nervous system. There's a direct correlation between the stress hormones you have, how high they are, and your libido and performance. So I'm actually doing a one-time live workshop in a couple weeks about the five daily practices you can do to functionally reset your nervous system and your adrenals. Again, this is a live workshop. I do probably four all year. There's gonna be an open live Q&A after. It's gonna be really fun. And again, the space is limited because I'm literally paying for the software that limits this number of people. So if you guys want, make sure you check out the link right below this video in the description. Join me, sign up for that live workshop. It's gonna be fun. I'll probably give like an hour long talk and then we'll do a live Q&A as long as you guys are there. So. Sign up, I do four a year, it's gonna be a good time. Now you might've heard this herb called horny goat weed. It's called yin yang hua in Chinese. And yin yang hua is an herb that falls into the category of kidney yang tonics. Now kidney yang herbs are herbs that affect the kidneys, the libido, the adrenals, and really the genital urinary pathways, the prostate, bladder, that kind of thing. But I want to share actual research on this herb because it is something we use clinically among many others. And I want to share what the research found. In this particular paper, it's called the therapeutic response of epimedium gandiflorum, different doses to restore the antioxidant potential and reproductive hormones in male albino rats. Try saying that three times fast. Now, 
What they found in this actual research paper was something interesting. They said they found that this epimidium extract possesses a male hormone-like effect, and the administration of this extract for two weeks orally, daily, significantly increased sexual function, the weight of the attached genitals, and the improved testosterone level in the plasma in rats. Now, what was interesting is that it also affected the sperm. It did also obviously improve the sex organ weight. I'm sure most guys won't complain about that, but also the spermatozoa, density, viability, etc. And finally, it noted the improvement in the sexual arousal was also reported on administration of plant extract that might be due to the improvement in reproductive hormones. So these rats basically gained like a male hormone-like effect from horny goat weed. This is in rats, right? But Traditional Chinese medicine is very different. The studies are never done on animals. The studies have been done for thousands of years on humans. And I can tell you from administering this and having taken it, that this does work for what it is advertised to do. <laughs> well, let's talk about a few other herbs here that have some research behind them. Now, another herb besides yin yang hua, horny goat weed, is called tu si zi. Tu si zi is also something that we use for kidney yang function. Oomph, as well as libido, uh, erections, getting and maintaining them, etc. Now, what's interesting about some of the research, again, this one was on rats, they found that it increased their testosterone levels and improved sperm motility. They concluded that the herb may stimulate testosterone production by enhancing the function of certain cells, and these cells are responsible for testosterone production. Now, tu sudze is often used for infertility and impotence, that kind of thing. Now, the third herb is an herb called dujong. Now, dujong it's called eucomia, and it's often used for what we say the liver and the kidneys and for strengthening the bones. Now, when we get into the research, research on dujong showed that, again, in rats, the supplementation significantly increased serum testosterone. And this study suggested the herb might stimulate the HPG axis, which is the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, which regulates testosterone production. All three of these herbs I can tell you from clinical practice are very effective for libido and for gaining and maintaining erections. But I figured it'd be interesting to share, even though these are studies on rats, that there is evidence for certain physiological pathways related to, let's say, libido and sexual performance. Now, finally, I wanna leave you with one thing here. All of these herbs fall into the category of kidney yang boosting herbs. And I think of kidney yang as like the key to life, libido, and the pursuit of happiness. Because the drive to be alive is a literal and metaphorical drive, hunger. Physical hunger, metaphorical hunger. If you think about someone who's clinically depressed, the hunger hormones are totally dysregulated. Either not eating at all and they're getting thin, or they're overeating typically and gaining a lot of weight without even feeling like they're trying. The hunger is also the hunger for life. Someone severely depressed they don't want to get out of bed. They don't want to shower. They don't want to clean. They don't want to apply for the new jobs. They don't hate their life. They don't want to date. A lot of these, we have to always think of this on many different levels, like a holographic level. You have the physical level. I'm physically hungry. You have the metaphorical level, which is like the hunger for life, the desire to improve oneself, to grow, to survive, to thrive, not just to lay down in a corner and die. The kidney yang is like the primal battery charge of life. And if we reduce this to a scientific perspective, the kidney, not only includes, yes, the physical kidney organ, that's like part of the detox pathways and all kinds of things, the kidney is also, from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view, the gate of life. It's like the battery charge. When the battery is done, you're done. So if you think about it, these herbs that strengthen this, strengthen, you know, erections, but they also strengthen the hunger for life, the hunger to be alive, to grow, to wanna to change, to wanna to work towards those dreams and those goals, to fight for the things that you want. And so a lot of these herbs, if you think about it, people who are severely depressed or have like chronic fatigue syndromes, we're no longer using herbs that treat the other organ networks we've talked about here. We're using herbs that treat the adrenals, the endocrine system, the hormones, whether it's stress or reproductive hormones, and they're treating often the kidneys. The deepest pathology we say relates typically to the heart and the kidneys. So that's what I've got for you today, guys. Don't forget, if you wanna see me one-to-one, -one, I do a limited number of new patient visits every month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. You can just go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic or scroll below this video. I have the clinic phone number, our email, 
and the website right there if you want more information. And in addition, I've put together a free quiz, which is sort of, this is how you figure out the root cause of your symptoms according to traditional Chinese medicine. It's like a, over a hundred symptoms. And we actually help you figure out which organ network it relates to. And we've taken time to hyperlink to other really good videos we've shot on these organ networks and what you can do to heal. The whole thing's free. So that's right in the description as well below. But don't forget, if you wanna join me live for this Q&A, this five steps to functionally resetting your adrenals and nervous system, space is limited, but I would love to see you there. It's the first link down below and I will see you guys soon.